Georgetown Street in Lexington, Kentucky, has been home to many monuments of African American history. Monuments of a community highly influential around the turn of the 20th century. Monuments from a time of segregation. But just a quarter mile off Georgetown Street stand the true monuments to black history in Lexington, in Cove Haven Cemetery. It uh, holds the remains of some former enslaved people and that second generation following enslavement who became the middle class uh, entrepreneurs of Lexington. Initially called Greenwood Cemetery, the tombstones have stood through time, guarding over the graves that hold the stories and memories of Lexington families. For Dr. Gerald Smith, the cemetery is important for what he calls collective memory. When we think about collective memory, keep in mind that for a number of years, there were quote unquote decoration days, which is actually Memorial Day. So it was an opportunity for families to gather in the cemetery and share memories, memories, um, experiences that are passed on from one generation to the next which becomes a collective memory, and it continues to evolve as each family uh, visits the cemetery. Standing tall is the marker for Henry Tandy, a builder whose firm laid the brickwork for the Fayette County Courthouse. All of his family is buried around him. Absolutely wonderful history of building on university campus all across the state and also here in Lexington, prominently the county courthouse. Buried near the front of Cove Haven is John Bate. Born into slavery in 1855, John graduated from Berea College and became a principal in Danville schools. Lizzie Faust would become the president of the Kentucky Federation of Colored Women and was founder of the Phyllis Wheatley YWCA. The humble tombstone of Dr. Mary Ellen Britton does not reflect what a giant she was of her time. She filled the role as educator, suffragist, and civil rights activist. I think what, it, what, what, what really struck me about her was the photograph that I found of her uh, at the uh, Kentucky Medical Society Association that met here in Lexington. And um, she's the only woman seated in the midst of all these men. Today, the collective memory of this sacred land is inspirational. They were folks who had such a thought about the value of, and opportunities of education. They had a certain love for their, their, their God, their communities. They made you want to be something more than you had imagined. They soft and saw things in you that you didn't even see in yourself. Dr. Ham finds himself inspired by Green P. Russell, who was a first African-American teacher in Lexington and twice served as president of the Kentucky Normal and Industrial Institute for Colored Persons, now Kentucky State University. It becomes important that we understand even today that this cemetery that is located in this community, which was a very substantial historically black community, many of the folks who live here today do not even know how important this is as a memorial history for them. One tombstone exists for a Kentuckian no longer buried here, Whitney Young Jr., a civil rights leader of the 60s and head of the Urban League. 6,000 people filled the cemetery along with Richard Nixon on the day Young was laid to rest. Shortly after the funeral, Young's wife had his body moved to her family plot in New York, but his tombstone remains. But for thousands at Cove Haven serves as their final resting place, each has its own story and legacy for families to cherish and a community memory to pass on to future generations. Rest from their labors and their works do follow them. The cemetery is so important to understanding the African-American experience. Once you've known the sacrifices, the struggles, the commitment, 
uh, the meetings that they were involved in, how they organized, the passion, the love for the community, their family, then it means something different to me, understanding that their works do follow them. Enjoy more Kentucky life. Subscribe now.